Welcome everyone to the Virtual College Exploration Program in partnership with Colleges That Change Lives. This is the College of Worcester information session. And before I pass it over to the team, I'm gonna kick us off with some housekeeping items in case you haven't heard them yet. We do have more sessions with CTCL through tomorrow evening. So feel free to continue to register for sessions to, and connect with colleges and universities. When you do register for these sessions, you get a barcode in that confirmation email know that that barcode's not necessary for any of the virtual events you partake in. All of these sessions are being recorded and posted to our website shortly after the session concludes. So whether you wanna rewatch one or watch one you may have missed, just check back on our website for those recordings. And then finally, you will be able to see the Wooster team and you'll be able to uh, hear them. Unfortunately, they cannot see or hear you all. This is webinar style format. So any questions you have throughout the presentation, Feel free to type those in the Q&A box and the presenters will do their best to address those throughout the session. Uh, so without further ado, I'll pass it over to Ryan to get us started. Thanks so much. Hey everybody, welcome to the Worcester 101 information session. Uh, we're really excited that you were all able to join us this evening. Uh, we're excited to connect with you, share a little bit more about the College of Worcester uh, and like Jen mentioned, definitely make sure to answer any questions that you all have along the way. So I'm actually one of two Worcester representatives that's going to be leading our talk today. My name is Ryan Ostendorf. I'm an assistant director of admissions here at the college, and I'm also a 2017 Worcester grad. Uh, but I'm lucky to be joined with one of our current students, uh, Sam Casey. Sam, do you mind taking a second to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hey, everybody. My name is Sam. I'm a senior intern with the Office of Admissions. I'm a rising senior at Worcester, political science major. I'm from the Pittsburgh area, and then you'll see a couple of my activities there. I'm in student government. Uh, I work for the student newspaper, and I uh, was also on moot court for a couple of years. But overall, I'm just very excited to be here. Definitely. Thanks for joining us, Sam, and, and providing us a little bit more with that current student perspective. So like we mentioned at the beginning, uh, we will have the, the Q&A feature of Zoom kind of live throughout today's, today's session. So feel free as we go to, to ask any questions that you all might have. We'll do our best to answer all of those questions near the end of our session. Uh, but we will also have one of my colleagues, Isabella Williams, answering some questions behind the scenes. So be on the lookout for any uh, typed answers to your questions as well. Alrighty then, so with that out of the way, we will go ahead and start with some quick facts about Worcester. So Worcester is a small liberal arts and sciences college, just like a lot of the CTCL schools, uh, with just a little over 2,000 students on campus. And this is something that we're really intentional about. We really believe it's an ideal size to provide the type of residential and academic environment that we think best prepares you for life after graduation. And something within that student body that we're really most proud of is the diversity of our students on campus. So we actually have less than 30% of our students coming from our home state of Ohio, and the rest are coming from around the country and around the world. So we're really lucky to have 45 different states represented on campus and an awesome international student population that comes from 62 different countries. So on that note, I do like to show this world map uh, to students and families first looking at Worcester, because I think it does a great job of highlighting some of that geographic diversity that we do have. So all the countries that you see here shaded in gold are all 135 different countries that Worcester received applications from this past cycle. So again, highlighting not only that the national reach that we have, but also the reach that we have across the entire globe. So another map that I think is really helpful to share with students and families is this map of our, of our campus grounds. So we have about 240 acres of campus in total. So like you can see here, we have a ton of trees, a lot of beautiful green spaces, but the part that you're actually seeing on this map is, is really the central part of campus. So pretty much the, the academic and residential spaces on campus. And that area is really easy to get around. It's very walkable. Um, it's about 100 acres total. Once you factor in that right hand corner where you see some of our athletic fields and you can also see a sliver of our on campus golf course, which extends much on beyond the map on that right hand side as well. Once you factor in those spaces, you do get to that 240 acres. But again, what you're seeing here and, and what you're gonna be navigating on a daily basis is, is really walkable and really easy to get around. So while we flip through some actual pictures of campus and, and highlight some of the different seasons that we have here, because we do have our, all four seasons uh, in Worcester, 
I like to point out that I often talk to families who return from one of their first campus tours and they often seem surprised and, and even a little bit shocked that we only have 2,000 students on campus. And so I know a lot of people will comment not only on the size and the scope of our actual campus grounds, but also just the general vibe and the high level of energy that they feel among our staff, students, and just community in general. So I personally really love that, that our students on campus live in an environment that kind of mirrors, it almost feels like a much larger institution, but they also reap all of the benefits of a small school. So flipping back to this campus map, I thought it would be great if Sam could jump in and talk a little bit about some of the spaces that he spends a lot of time on campus or maybe point out a couple of his favorites. Yeah, so um, you'll find me and a lot of Worcester students throughout the day, uh, mainly at the Lowry Center. That's our student center on campus, very centrally located to anywhere you'd be walking from. And that's just gonna have a lot of the places you're just gonna go to throughout your average day. Uh, so that's where the mailboxes are, that's where your bookstore is. Um, that's where, you know, lots of comfy seats and sofas to either relax or do some homework or just, you know, read a book, listen to music, stuff like that. Uh, there's a fire pit right in the middle, and that's usually blazing in the winter. So it's really cozy to sit around there and do some homework. Uh, if you need, you know, some energy or a caffeine boost, our convenience store is located right there. So you can grab a snack or, or maybe a cup of coffee. But if you need something a little bit more, you can go right upstairs. And that's where our main dining hall is. So you can grab breakfast, lunch, and dinner um, in between studying with friends. So um, that's really awesome. It's also where a lot of, you know, the student organization meetings will be held. So uh, you'll be there in the evenings as well. And then right across the street, you'll find two of our three libraries. They're kind of connected there. Um, and that's just obviously a great place to get some work done uh, after class is over. Uh, you can really find what, you know, method of studying really works best for you. So if you just kind of like to casually study while also chatting with friends, or maybe if you have like a group project, you need to talk and like collaborate or, or write on a whiteboard, then that first floor is going to be really great for that. Uh, but if you really need to cram for an exam the next day, which I've had to do tons of times, you can go right up to that third floor and it's like completely silent. Uh, it's really great to focus up there. And then moving away from the academic side, lastly, I'll, I'll hit on the Scott Center. Um, that's just where our gym is going to be located and, and a track to walk, jog, run around. Um, all students have access to it. You just have to have your student ID. And that's just a great place to kind of blow off some steam after sitting in class all day. So you'll find a lot of Worcester students there in the afternoons. Awesome. Thank you, Sam. And so flipping back to this quick facts page, I also want to point out that Worcester has an, has an average class size of about 18 students. So we're really committed to providing access to our professors. And if you go around and, and talk to different students or talk to different faculty members around campus, they're all gonna tell you that their number one priority is you as a student in their classroom. So because of this, most of your classes are gonna be very, very interactive. Most are gonna be largely discussion-based. Um, but Sam, I'd love if you could jump back in and, and talk a little bit about what that smaller class size means to you and, and some of the benefits that you get out of that. Yeah, so what it really means, you know, that speaking to that ratio, it does mean professors are extremely accessible and you're going to have a lot of, you know, engagement in the classroom, but you're also going to be able to connect with them outside of the classroom as well. Um, your classes, like Ryan mentioned, are very discussion based. It's not just that professor lecturing you from a PowerPoint and you're scribbling down notes. You know, it's very engaging, whether it's between the professor and the students or, you know, students are in smaller groups, you know, having little discussions and then bringing it back. Um, that's usually how most of the learning takes place at Worcester, which, you know, I find very beneficial. And then, you know, you're able to really engage with your professor outside of class as well. You can stop by their office anytime. So whether you have to ask a question about a homework assignment or maybe an exam, if you just want to talk about life in general, they're really happy to just, you know, hear about what you're involved in on campus, your extracurriculars, they're really going to know, you know, you and what you're involved in. Um, and they're also very knowledgeable about the different resources on campus. So you can go to them with like an academic question and they can point you to the right person or the right office to go to to get some help. So um, that's super great as well. Um, overall, I just think this is super beneficial because in college, um, speaking from experience, you're going to need help a lot of times. Um, and I found it a lot easier being able to go to this professor who, you know, really knows you and, and you feel comfortable with um, to ask for help. Certainly. And what I think is great about that relationship that, that Sam kind of just described is that it goes beyond just the one semester that you might have that professor. So by the end, by the end of your four years, you, you end up with this entire network of, of different mentors and different resources that you can kind of tap on throughout your four years, but, but also take advantage of once you leave Worcester as well. 
So lastly, on this quick facts page, um, I always like to mention that Worcester does not have any graduate programs either. So we're an entirely undergraduate institution. And this is also something that's really intentional. So all of our classes, all of our labs are led and taught by professors, not graduate teaching assistants. So I will say though that you, you will hear the term teaching assistant or TA uh, thrown around Worcester's campus. We do have TAs uh, in the classroom, but again, they're not there leading or, or responsible for any of the classes that you might be taking. They're really just there as an added resource in addition to the professor um, for you to utilize throughout that semester. Awesome. So now with some general information and, and quick facts about Worcester kind of under our belt, I definitely understand that, that trying to take that next step and, and really determine the true differences between different colleges can be a little bit daunting and it can be a little bit overwhelming, especially if you're just now starting off in the college search process um, or even more so if you're looking at a lot of other CTCL schools that, that all look pretty similar on paper. Uh, so if nothing else today, our goal is to hopefully have you come away with a few of the key characteristics that we think helps Worcester stand apart from a lot of the other schools that you might be looking at. So we'll talk a little bit more about each of these in detail, um, but those three areas that I like to highlight for students are Worcester is America's premier college for mentored undergraduate research. Like I mentioned at the beginning, we have a global campus and a really thriving community. And lastly, I like to talk about the local opportunities in the actual city of Worcester and, and some of the opportunities that it affords. So first up is this idea of mentored undergraduate research. And I know it's really common when you think of research to immediately picture the natural sciences, somebody, pick, somebody working in a lab doing some sort of experiment, pretty much exactly like what you're seeing in this photo here. And yes, that's definitely one type of research and it does happen on Worcester's campus. But on our campus, research takes on a lot of different forms and it's available in every single academic department. So it's not only experimental and scientific, but it's also analytical, it's in the social sciences, and it's also creative and in the performing arts like music, theater, and the studio arts like you see in this picture here. And so we make sure that every single Worcester student, again, not just those in a certain major and certainly not just those in an honors program, but actually every single student completes at least one major research project prior to graduating. And so in fact, that research project is actually required of all of our students in their senior year. And so our curriculum and our experiential learning opportunities are really built intentionally to provide the type of coursework and opportunities for students to first discover and confirm what they're actually most passionate about in the classroom. And then that way, by the time they get to the end of their junior year, they not only have that strong sense of what they're interested in and, and what they're passionate about academically, but they also feel ready and prepared to tackle a significant piece of research or creative expression within their academic major. And so I love this idea that at Worcester, students don't just acquire new knowledge, but they actually create it. So we refer to this senior, uh, this senior project as Senior Independent Study, or IS for short. And so as one of our chemistry professors likes to point out, the name Independent Study is probably one of the worst titles for one of the best undergraduate experiences. And I think he would probably prefer to call it Interdependent Study, since you actually work one-on-one -on -one with a professor who serves as your advisor and really supports you every single step of the way. And so independent study is actually one of the four classes since it is a requirement. Uh, it is one of the four classes that you'll take in both the fall and spring semester of your senior year. And again, since you're working one on one with that professor throughout the entire process, it's essentially a class of one. And I know some of you out there might be really excited by the idea of research and, and by this senior year uh, project concept. And I know others might be a little bit overwhelmed and, and might find it a little bit daunting. And so please know that, that our professors have developed a four-year plan to gradually introduce you to one, what research even looks like in your academic major, but then also prepare you well ahead of time for that project coming up in your last year. And so in fact, to do that, our curriculum includes a variety of different opportunities within each year that you're at Worcester, starting as soon as you get on campus. So it starts off with a course called First Year Seminar, which is a small class, usually of about 15 or 16 students, and the course is really there to introduce you how to best tackle different resources and different texts and information, but it also provides a really strong foundation in writing, which is going to be relevant for all of our students, no matter what academic major you might end up in. And so moving on from there, you also in your second year have an opportunity for something called sophomore research, which basically allows you to serve as an apprentice to a professor's ongoing research project and kind of gives you that first taste of some hands on research or, or a hands on project. 
And then in your third year, students complete something called junior independent study, which is a semester long experience specific to your major. And so I know a lot of students like to call this kind of like a practice run or a trial run for their senior independent study project. And so these are just a few examples of the really intentional ways that, that we prepare you for the senior capstone project over the course of your first three years on campus. So it's not like it's something that we talk about right now and then you don't hear about it again until you're a senior at Worcester. It really is built into every single step along the way. But Sam, with the idea of research in mind and, and now that we've kind of laid out the general academic progression and, and academic journey at Worcester, can you talk a little bit about your own experience uh, with the academic journey here and, and talk a little bit about your plans for your senior independent study project? Yeah, so um, what's really great about Worcester is, you know, everyone's coming in undecided. You're not declaring for a certain, you know, department or major. Um, so, you know, this is beneficial because no one's going to get too ahead. Um, no one's going to feel super behind. It's really everyone's going to be in the same boat right away. Um, so you have until halfway through your sophomore year to declare your major. Um, so that gives you time to, you know, confirm that your passion is your passion, but also gives you time to, you know, figure out what you want to do, which is really nice. And then speaking to independent study, you know, I was one of those students, like Ryan mentioned, who felt like the whole process seemed very daunting coming in as a first year. I had no experience with research or anything like that and, and feeling like I'm going to have to tackle this project in, in just three years seemed like a lot at the time. Um, but Worcester really does facilitate that experience over the course of those first three years, uh, especially your junior year with junior independent study. Uh, you know, I just took that last semester and, and I feel like that's where I really honed all these final skills and, you know, research in general, but, you know, reading and writing. Um, and now I'm feeling a lot better about it, you know, going into my senior year in like a week, you know, I'm feeling so much better and I'm actually excited to do this like, you know, independent research in political science that I'm coming up with all by myself. Because when you really think about it like that, it, it is really awesome. Um, so it's totally okay to feel apprehensive at first because, you know, that really goes away by the time you have to start at your senior year. Certainly. Thanks, Sam. And so I know some of you might be sitting out there wondering why this is so important and why Sam and I have spent the last five or 10 minutes specifically talking about research at Worcester. And really it's because that we know a long-term project like this develops the exact skills that graduate schools and employers are really seeking most in their candidates. And so you can see some of them on screen here, but just to list a couple of them off, you're talking about independent judgment skills, creativity, project management and time management skills, self-confidence, and certainly strong written and oral communication skills. And all of these are gonna be very relevant no matter whether you're going to a graduate program, a professional school, or straight into the career field. And so I also realize that in talking about research, it's really easy for, for me to sit here and, and say that Worcester is America's premier college for, for mentored undergraduate research, but it also doesn't hurt when you have organizations like Gallup and Niche, Princeton Review, and US News all endorsing that fact as well. And a great example is actually on screen right now, but since 2002, US News has gone around and surveyed different college presidents, provosts, and deans, basically asking them to identify different schools that really set the standard for undergraduate research opportunities and the senior capstone experience. And only two schools, just two, have made both of those lists every single year since the start of the survey. And those two schools are Worcester and some small school in Princeton, New Jersey that I'm guessing most of you have heard of. So at this point in the process as well, I'm hoping another theme that you all are picking up on is this idea of mentoring and mentorship, uh, which is something that really kind of fuses our, our campus community together. And so I wanna take a second to introduce you to APEX, which is our Academic and Career Advising Center. So APEX provides mentorship in a variety of different ways. And in addition to the academic major advisor that you have for all four years at Worcester and your specific senior independent study advisor, you also have this center full of staff and faculty beginning as soon as you step on campus who are really there to help support you on your academic journey and help you find some practical ways to take what you're learning in the classroom and apply it to the real world. So APEX does this by housing a variety of different offices all in one location on campus. So those offices are academic advising, the learning center for academic resources and academic support, the entrepreneurship center for students that might be interested in starting their own business, off-campus study and global engagement, of course, for study abroad opportunities, experiential learning and community engagement, and of course, career planning. But Sam, as a current student, do you mind talking a little bit about the benefits that you've gotten out of APEX or how you've used APEX over the course of your first couple years at Worcester? 
Yeah, so I could really speak about like my personal experience, especially under that like career planning field. Uh, and it really began my first year. I was already starting to think about what I wanted to do post graduation and for a career. And what I had in mind at the time was law school. Uh, but I had no idea what I had to do, you know, during my time at Worcester to prepare myself um, to, you know, eventually apply, but also to be successful once I was actually there. Uh, but luckily through Apex, you know, there's a pre-law advising program and I was able to book an appointment with someone and, and go in, but not really knowing what to expect. And I really walked out of there with like all the resources I ever could have needed. Um, so, you know, examples of that, they really lay out, you know, what classes you should be taking during your four years at Worcester, um, you know, what you should be doing with your summers. So by the time, you know, you are going to apply for, you know, your to law school in this case, um, you're going to be a good applicant and get into the places you want to get into. And then once you're there, you know, you're going to be super successful uh, because you've had the experience and have taken the right classes. Um, I think the best resource they give you, though, is they connect you to Worcester alumni through LinkedIn um, and really facilitate that process. So you're able to do, you know, maybe a job shadowing experience or, or even an internship with someone, you know, who was in your shoes once and, and are really willing to help, you know, one of their own. So that's, you know, super helpful as well. Uh, but this is the same if you're thinking about graduate school in general. Um, if you're thinking about other pre-professional programs like med school, you know, you can have the same experience. It's not just for people interested in law school. Um, but it's also worth mentioning that, you know, you can use Apex much more casually. You can just walk in on a Wednesday. You don't even need an appointment and just get someone to look at your resume for that summer job or internship you're applying to that day um, and really tailor it. So um, you can use it much more casually than, you know, your whole career. Um, but it is really the one stop shop for, you know, all of those different things listed on the screen. And it definitely is a resource that, you know, Worcester students are very grateful to have. Definitely. And what I think is so great about Apex, like Sam said, is, is if you know exactly what you need to get out of the out of the resources there, great, you're going to be able to find them there. But like you mentioned, also, if you if you're not really sure where to start, you can just kind of waltz in there and they're going to get you connected with and, and get you started in the right direction. And so when you combine the variety of different experiences that Apex has with Worcester's unique approach to mentored undergraduate research, you honestly see a lot of great results. So 96% of our students are employed or in graduate school within six months after graduation, and over 90% are accepted into their top choice graduate or professional school. So I do wanna transition a little bit away from the, from the academic focus because Worcester also recognizes that an excellent education requires bringing together many different perspectives, experiences, and ideas. And so our global community of learners come from a lot of different areas. They come from small farm towns and big cities. They come from dozens of different faiths and cultures and many different perspectives. And this is something that's really central to the mission on campus and to the learning that happens here. And so with 16% of our student body being made up of international students and US citizens living abroad, Worcester is actually Ohio's most international campus and we rank 19th overall among all private liberal arts colleges in the US. And so as we know now, really more than ever, it's extremely important to learn both with, with and others uh, from across the world. So in addition to the global community that we have on campus, a lot of students like to take advantage of the different study abroad opportunities, and we have programs in over 60 different countries. And so your study abroad can look like the very traditional semester or even year long experience, but we also have different abbreviated options that might happen over an extended school break or one of the first couple weeks of our summer break. And so one really popular example of the abbreviated option is the Worcester Trek programs. So the Worcester Trek programs are essentially classes that are led by Worcester faculty and they do vary by theme and location each year. But the treks are actually embedded in a spring semester course at Worcester. And like I said, that experience abroad takes place during a school break, like our two week spring break, or one of the first couple weeks of summer break. And so that time abroad usually varies anywhere from two to six total weeks. And like I said, the offerings do change each academic year, but past programs have traveled to places like England, Thailand, India, and Greece, just to name a few. Um, and so this can be a great option for students that, that maybe aren't looking for that traditional semester or, or year long abroad experience, or maybe for a student that, that's looking to, to have a multiple different abroad experiences during their college years as well. So in addition to the, to the global community that we have on campus and a lot of the global opportunities that students take advantage of off of campus, I think something else that makes Worcester even more special is the fact that we actually have students that embrace each other's differences while also having this incredible sense of community and school pride that you honestly don't always see at a lot of schools our size. 
And so I think a big reason for this is honestly, there's just a lot going on on campus. And we have over 120 different student run organizations and clubs that uh, plan events all throughout the year. So something that I like to point out as well on this fact is we're not really a one size fits all kind of campus. You can kind of see that from, from this slide here. So we actually have a third of our students performing in a musical ensemble, another third are competing on a varsity athletic team, and about a quarter or so uh, participate in our theater and dance programs. And what's even better is these aren't siloed different groups on campus. You'll find athletes in our theater department, you'll find athletes uh, in the music ensembles and, and any kind of hodgepodge within there. Um, but Sam, as a current student, do you mind kind of talking about uh, some of the different clubs that are on campus that highlight some of, diver some of our diversity and, and maybe highlighting a couple of your own personal favorites? Yeah, totally. So, you know, something that I think is very unique to Worcester, uh, because you're having most students coming from outside of Ohio and you're going to have a lot of students coming from um, all over the globe as well, you know, you're going to have very strong identity-based groups on Worcester's campus. Um, so what that means is, you know, examples are like the Black Student Association, the Queer Student Union, Latinos Who Need Us, um, the African Student Union. Um, it's going to be different student organizations that are tied to um, a student's identity and, and what they identify as. So um, those are really great because they host so many cool different events that, you know, are both informative, but also super fun with, um, you know, certain food and, and you know, certain um, things that are unique to, you know, in the, in the example of like cultural groups that are unique to those cultures. It's a really great time for, you know, students to come out, but also, you know, you'll find faculty and staff and administration, and even people that just live in the city of Worcester coming out for these events um, to just kind of learn more and, and grow as human beings and, and see like the different perspectives and to be able to try to understand it. So I know that's been very important for me uh, during my time at Worcester. And I know, you know, a lot of other students feel that same way. Um, but there are so many different things to get involved in. Um, you know, something I recommend is just, you know, having an open mind coming in and, and you know, doing something you liked before, but also trying something totally new uh, because you don't know, you know, where, what you're going to find. I know for me, that example is the Worcester Voice, which is our student run newspaper on campus. Here's a great picture of us. Um, and that's just, you know, I never thought I'd be interested in journalism, but now I'm even thinking about it for a career. So, you know, even outside of the class classroom, you don't know where these, you know, clubs are going to bring you and, and can really, you know, be focused on your future, which is really cool. No, definitely. And, and that school spirit and that pride is, is really evident in a lot of the clubs and organizations that, that Sam just mentioned. Uh, but I also think it's really evident in a lot of the different cherished Worcester traditions. Uh, and the traditions on Worcester's campus, uh, in my opinion, are, are really cool and, and really unique. A vast majority of them have been going on for, for decades. Uh, so you can meet an alum that graduated 5, 10, 20, 30 years ago, and, and more than likely you're going to have some kind of shared connection, some kind of shared story that, that you all can talk about. And so I'd love to take a second just to kind of talk about a couple of our own personal favorites. Uh, my own personal favorite is actually shown on screen right here. This is something that happens before every single home football game at Worcester. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, we do have a, kind of a, a drum line and, and a bagpipe uh, band that, that lines up on this grassy hill, which is right in front of our football stadium. Uh, and so our football team obviously gathers up behind them. Uh, and then they'll slowly march down that grassy hill. And if you could see this live, or, or hopefully you can see this in person one day, uh, eventually the football team would break through that line and, and kind of charge onto the football field. And for me, I think it's a really unique event. It's something that's been going on for, for a long time. There's a lot of energy to it. There's a lot of hype to it. Um, and just a really cool tradition for, for a small Division three school. Um, but Sam, do you have a personal favorite that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you'll see on your screen this kind of crazy event here. It happens in the winter when it snows enough, um, which it definitely does, you know, on Worcester's campus. Um, so in the evening after classes are over, after all the activities are done, students will grab trash cans, they'll grab laundry baskets, basically anything you can pile snow into, and they will go to our Calc Arch, which is right in the middle of Calc Hall, one of our oldest academic buildings on campus, and they will pile that snow in there until it's packed all the way to the top uh, and all the way to the sides. So you can kind of tell from this picture, but it's like multiple human beings tall and wide. So, you know, it's going to take a good amount of time and, and effort. And it's usually pretty cold at this point. Uh, it's later at night, but, you know, Worcester students are very committed to following this through and, and getting it done. And it's just like feeling that sense of, um, you know, that connection with everyone you're going through your four-year experience with, but also like Ryan kind of mentioned, you know, the generations of Worcester alumni who came before you, you're feeling that sense of pride and spiritness in your school um, through this really awesome and, and unique tradition. So it's definitely something that Worcester students want to be a part of, you know, at least once during their four years. 
Awesome. So lastly, like I mentioned at the beginning, I did want to take a couple minutes to talk about the actual city of Worcester and a lot of the great local opportunities. Um, I also want to remind you all, if you do have questions or if questions have come up throughout today's talk, feel free to keep putting them in the, the Q&A feature. Sam and I will try to answer as many live as we can here in a couple minutes, uh, but we'll also try to provide any typed answers as well. So like I said, the city of Worcester, um, as a student here on campus, your home is not just a beautiful campus, um, but it's also the town and city of Worcester. So I know we have a lot of prospective students that I talk to who are exploring a lot of schools very similar to us. And it's no secret that a lot of smaller sized liberal arts schools aren't usually located in the most major metropolitan areas, and they can sometimes be located in some pretty isolated cities. So honestly, we do like to brag of our city of about 30,000 residents because it really provides a lot of the amenities and opportunities that most larger cities provide while also being located in a safe and easy to get around community. So just some quick information about the actual city of Worcester. Um, we're about an hour directly south from Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland is usually the airport that students will fly in and out of whether they're visiting campus or whether they're coming to and from campus. But we're also about 35 or 40 minutes from the Akron Canton area and we're about an hour and a half or so from the state capital of Columbus. And so I know a lot of students love that they can take advantage of the different shops, restaurants, and the movie theater on the north end of town. So maybe that's getting their Chipotle fix or doing some homework at a place like Starbucks or Panera. But I know they also like to take advantage of the downtown area, which is only about a 15 or so minute walk from campus. Um, they can take advantage of a lot of different small cafes and breakfast places, a lot of great individually locally owned shops and restaurants and, and places like that. Uh, but Sam, do you have a personal favorite spot off of campus? Oh yeah, so I know you mentioned it. I really like those breakfast places. There's a couple different options, but my favorite is Farmer Boy. And I just like to wake up late on a Saturday and grab brunch with friends and, and get some French toast in my system before I have to get on the grind of homework that day. Definitely. So in addition to a lot of the good food that's off of campus and, and some of the more fun social life aspects of the city of Worcester, uh, Worcester is also the county seat and it's a regional hub for a lot of businesses. So students can pretty easily find different service and internship opportunities, whether it be in the different local school districts near campus, uh, the county courthouse, which is right downtown, uh, one of the many financial firms in the area, or one of our two hospital branches off of campus, uh, one of which is pictured right here. So we're actually really lucky to have two different major hospital branches just a few blocks from campus. One is obviously the Cleveland Clinic, but then we also have the local Worcester Community Hospital. And we're lucky to have really great relationships with both of those, uh, both of those hospitals. And they provide a lot of great hands-on opportunities, especially for students interested, going in, interested in going in to the healthcare field. Awesome, so that is Worcester uh, in a nutshell. Like I mentioned at the beginning, if you come away with nothing else, I, want, I do want you to remember that, that Worcester is America's premier college for, for mentored undergraduate research. We do have that global thriving campus community of about 2000 students who really support one another and, and celebrate each other's diversity. And we also have that beautiful campus that's, that's located in a town and city that provides a lot of great student life and different internship opportunities that sometimes you can only find in much larger areas. So like I mentioned, uh, I did want to save uh, some time to answer any of the questions that you all might have had. And I do see several coming in at this point. One quick plug that I'll put is that this is also my and Sam's email addresses. So if there's any questions that we aren't able to get to um, or any questions that you didn't feel comfortable asking, definitely shoot us an email. We'll be happy to talk to you more about Worcester or your own college search process. So feel free to utilize that. But in the meantime, it does look like we have about 10 or 12 minutes to, to answer some questions live here. And so I see the first one that came in is asking um, how freshmen pick their first term classes or their first semester classes, and if they get to pick or if they're actually automatically assigned those classes. So that's a great question. Uh, you do have a lot of say in the first semester classes that you take at Worcester, and so you do get to choose those. We actually have a summer orientation program uh, where, well, not this past summer, but in a normal year, students would come to campus in person. Uh, they would meet with a variety of different advisors, they would get to meet with some different staff, and they would actually sit down with a professor to schedule out those first semester classes. So you're able to talk to a different um, current student, you're able to talk to a professor, and you're able to talk to a staff member while you're here to help schedule that, that first semester course load. Um, so you do have a lot of say in that. Um, Sam, I don't know if you have, really have anything to add to that, but that's what that process looks like. Awesome. 
So another question is asking just kind of generally what the weather is like. Um, so this student specifically is from is from Minnesota. Um, but Sam, do you want to talk about kind of what the weather is like on campus? Yeah, so um, we really kind of the way we said at the beginning, it really experiences like all four seasons. So, you know, the fall is going to be, you know, start off warm, get cold, winter is going to be cold and it's going to snow, you know, spring will start out cold and get, you know, a little bit warmer and then the summer is going to be hot. Um, you know, it's typically the same kind of weather as Pittsburgh. So I feel like I can speak to it kind of well. Um, compared to Minnesota, I have a pretty good friend from Minnesota. And based on just their experience, you know, I think it does get it definitely gets colder in Minnesota and, and it'll snow, you know, a lot more in terms of like inches um, in Minnesota as well. But, you know, you definitely have those days where it's snowing and raining. Um, so it's not like hot all the time. It, 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 the weather is, you know, it, it feels like it's constantly changing. So it isn't compared to Minnesota. It's not as cold and the winters aren't as bad, but you know, you're definitely going to feel the winter when you're in Worcester. Awesome. So another question coming in is asking if uh, Worcester requires ACT or SAT scores for admission. Um, great question. Uh, we do not require those test scores. Um, we are a test optional institution. Um, so you're more than welcome to submit them if you would like to. Um, but if you don't want to for any reason, or if this past uh, summer you weren't able to take the test due to the pandemic, um, you certainly don't have to submit those. You will not be punished or, or held accountable for any reason. Um, for those uh, for those lack of test scores. So completely up to you as, as a student. So another great question coming in asking kind of what the housing situation is like and, and what dining is like specifically. Um, Sam, as a current student, I think this would be a great one for you to tackle. Yeah, um, obviously I could, I, you know, it could take me 20 minutes to explain all of it. So I'll try to, you know, hit it as best as I can. Um, Overall, I think, you know, so you're going to have to live on campus um, all four years. 99% of students live on campus all four years, which, you know, to some people that might sound like kind of a bad thing. And I, you know, will say that it is not at all. There's so many different options. So your first year, you're going to live in that very, you know, typical residence hall and in a room that's you and one other person. Um, but then after that, you have so many different options. You know, you can live by yourself. You can live with um, you and two other friends. Um, there's also different styles of living instead of that typical residence hall. So, you know, there's suites. So that's, you know, several different rooms and then kind of a common living area and, you know, their own bathroom. Um, there's also um, houses to live in. So that's actually just like, you know, actual homes that the college um, owns that have bought that are nearby. And usually those are tied to a community service project. So you and a big group of people will be able to live in there and have your own house and be able to have that kind of cool style of living but it's going to be tied to, you know, community service. So every week or every other week, um, you're going to go out in the community and do something. And um, that's something that's very rewarding. I know so many different students that do that and they all really love it. Um, there's so many different options and, and, and things to do and, and people always really enjoy that. So there are a lot of different options in terms of that. Um, and then dining. So there's one main dining hall um, that's like the, you know, all you care to eat. So you swipe once and then you go in and then it's kind of like buffet style. So that's where you're going to find a lot of students eating. Um, but then there are kind of, you know, a couple separate other places. So there's a place called Mom's, and that's where you can kind of get, you know, that, you know, burgers, fries, quesadillas, like late night snacks like that. Um, there's also kind of a cafe where you can get smoothies and you can get, you know, more like freshly made sandwiches and soups and salads, um, kind of like Panera. And then there's there's a couple locations like that. So usually those are great for lunch and then you can kind of hit the main dining hall for dinner. But yeah, there are different styles of eating and, and it's very um, friendly to people with different diets or people that have food allergies. They really work really well with those students to um, figure that out to make sure there's still like a wide selection. Awesome, thanks for that, Sam. And there's another quick question that was asking about uh, Greek life percentages. Uh, Greek life is an option uh, at, well, on Worcester's campus. Uh, I will say it's not, um, something that dominates our social culture. Uh, about 19 or so percent of students are involved with Greek life. Um, so it is definitely an option if you're interested in it, but also not a requirement in order to, to have a social life and make friends on campus. Um, Sam, anything to add to that? Cool, awesome. Um, another great question asking if it's easy to double major on campus. Yes, definitely. Um, we have a lot of students that double major on campus. Um, really the biggest thing that usually students are curious about when double majoring at Worcester is, is about how that independent study project works in their senior year. And really you have two options. You can either do a individual project for each major um, or you can choose to combine your majors uh, into one topic and into one project. 
That is what a vast majority of students choose to do is they'll draw a little bit from each of the disciplines uh, and combine it into one project in, in one topic. Um, I don't know if Sam, if you have any friends that have double majored or anything like that, but it is certainly very doable um, on campus. Yeah, I have a lot of friends that double major and, and they really like it to combine their interests. So it is very common. Awesome. So also asking if financial aid follows you abroad. Good question. In general, simple answer is yes. Um, your financial aid and scholarships will, will transfer with you in your abroad program. So the easiest way to answer the question is that typically the, the cost in, in tuition that you pay for a semester at Worcester is pretty much what you're gonna pay for that semester abroad as well. Um, a vast majority of our study abroad programs also have some kind of housing option associated with them. So you can usually take advantage of that as well. Usually your main costs are any like personal expenses that you have while you're over there. Um, and you do have to pay for your travel to, to go to and from that abroad location. So another question asking is if there is a professor student advisory program or something similar to that at Worcester. Um, that's a great question. And, and I think that kind of ties back to the mentorship that happens on campus. Um, so Sam, do you kind of want to talk about the relationship that you've had with your own individual academic advisor and then kind of the advisor that you'll have for your independent study? Yeah, so um, it's really great having this faculty member that you can really connect with anytime. So um, my academic advisor, Dr. Corral, is really great. Um, he's really helpful when I'm scheduling classes and just want to talk about stuff in general. Um, he always, anytime I make an appointment, you know, he takes the time to, you know, get the school newspaper and read any articles I wrote um, to kind of talk about them. So I think that's very nice that he's kind of, you know, into that. Um, and then in terms of your independent study advisor, you know, I haven't chosen mine quite yet, but, you know, that process, you're just going to kind of talk with, you know, the different professors and um, your major and, you know, you're able to kind of see which one kind of matches up the best. Um, and then kind of, you know, you have a say in terms of which professor you're going to get for your independent study because of, you know, usually it's like um, similar like interests and research interests. So you have a say in that as well. And, and I am looking forward to doing that. Awesome. So another question that came in um, is asking if there are gender neutral bathrooms on campus. Um, and so great question. Uh, yes, there are gender neutral bathrooms uh, across all of campus. Uh, pretty much every single building on campus, academic, residential, um, has at least one gender neutral uh, bathroom option within there. We also have different gender neutral housing options. Um, we have different mixed gender housing options as well on campus um, for students to take advantage of. Um, and then other questions coming in, kind of asking about the general school vibe on campus. Um, Sam, I don't know if you kind of want to take a stab at, at just a general Worcester student vibe. This is a hilarious question. This is, uh, this is something I, everyone should ask at every college. Um, I don't know. I would describe it as just, it's, it's pretty, like everyone's pretty quirky and, and very good at like getting along with so many different kind of groups of people. It's not, you know, um, clicky or kind of like sectioned off to just what your interests are because people are going to be involved in so many different things um, and everyone's going to be you know even if it's not their interest they're going to be supporting their friends going to different um, you know student org events going in and supporting friends that are playing a sport even if like you never watched that sport or you're not even interested in that sport it's just kind of supporting people um, so I think the the vibe is it's you know very community oriented and you're going to be able to you know, hang out with people and it, it, everyone's kind of getting along and it's, it's, you know, kind of a cool experience that I know I didn't get in high school. So I really, um, I love having it now, if that answers your question. Awesome. So it looks like we are kind of nearing the, the end of our allotted time slot here. I'll snag in one more question that just came in uh, asking about opportunities that the college provides to help students build professional connections within their field. Great question. Um, this is going to be Kind of housed in that apex office that we talked about a little bit earlier um, which is in that located in one of our main libraries uh, so a little bit like sam mentioned when he was talking about his own use of apex uh, we do have different advisors and different staff members located in that in that area that can kind of get you connected with different professionals in your field of interest or in your career field uh, so we're lucky to have a really strong alumni network that's honestly spread all across the country. Um, so if you have a specific industry or a specific area uh, in the country that you're trying to get to, more than likely we're gonna be able to find a, an alum to connect with, connect with you, um, whether that be uh, through one of our alumni programs, whether that be through utilizing LinkedIn, like Sam mentioned a little bit earlier as well. 
Um, but yes, certainly have great alumni connections in our Apex office and specifically our career planning office within Apex does a great job of facilitating that process. Awesome. So if there's nothing else, I will go ahead and, and pass it back over. But we really do enjoy you all kind of taking the time to connect with us. Um, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Worcester, definitely take advantage of our different virtual visit opportunities. We have some different virtual tours that are led by current students so you can meet and interact with some more people like Sam. We also have some different virtual panels and, and things like that. So feel free to go to worcester.edu backslash visit. Um, and like I said, if you have any other questions or want to connect, definitely shoot us an email. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you so much to the team for sharing their evening with us and giving all this great information. Um, conversation definitely isn't stopping here. We will be sure to provide your information to them, as well as all the questions that were asked throughout the presentation. But as you exit the Zoom webinar, you will be taken to a quick survey. It's only four questions, so we hope to hear your feedback. Um, and as I alluded to in the beginning, we have more CTCL sessions through tomorrow evening, and all of our recordings will be available on our website shortly. Um, so I, I hope everyone has a great morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Uh, and once again, thank you so much to the Worcester team uh, for spending their evening with us. I hope everyone has a great night. Bye-bye.